All right, so let's talk about this frictional force and normal force lab. Our goal here is going to be to derive an equation for the force of friction. Just like we did in the spring force lab, I'm going to start myself off by drawing a free body diagram for the block that was being slid across the wood. So we have uh, the block has mass. Okay. So we have a force of gravity, and then you were adding masses to the block as you went through the video. So that force of gravity value would have changed along the way. The block is sitting on the table, so it has a normal force. So remember that a normal force is just a contact force with some surface. So in this case, our contact is a force between the block and the uh, wood that it was being slid across. Okay. We were using a force probe to pull the uh, block forward. So I'm just gonna label that F pull. Okay, so that was our force probe uh, being used to pull it, woo, uh, to pull it forward. Okay, um, and then this lab is based off of this idea of a frictional force. So if you think about friction in your everyday life, okay, so this will be a new force to us, but it's not brand new. The concept is not brand new to you. So this friction, this force of friction is going to be opposite to the motion of the object because friction pulls back. It is in the opposite direction of your motion. So if I'm using this force pull to pull forward, then I'm going to draw my force of friction backwards. Okay, so a little side note on where I'm drawing all of these forces. Uh, maybe you've noticed in seeing in the videos a couple of different um, free body diagrams being drawn. We are going to draw the forces from their point of contact. So this force of gravity, you can't really see because force of gravity and normal force kind of get on top of each other. But I drew the force of gravity from the center of mass. Okay. And that's because the force of gravity is coming from the gravitational field. So it's not a contact force. It's not coming, coming from a direct contact between the object and the um, Earth. So I don't really have a point of contact to draw it from. So the general idea is we usually draw it from the center of mass of an object. Um, the center of mass of an object is not always in the middle. But for P1 purposes, it will be for all of our shapes. So I'm just making it from the middle of whatever object I'm looking at. The normal force, I started the force from the bottom and then worked my way up because the bottom would be the point of contact between the block and the surface. This pull force came from a probe that we were attaching to the edge of the block. And then the force of friction. Now, I generally start this line from the middle but really the point of contact here, the, what I'm showing is that it's a contact between this block and the surface at the bottom. So I've just drawn it at the bottom here. Um, so that's all I'm doing there. It's general correct practice to draw each of them from the point of contact. So as you are working on learning how to draw these free body diagrams and you're going through example set one, try to keep that in, in your mind, okay? But now this free body diagram looks a little bit different than when we, ones we've drawn before. I have forces going up and down, but now I also have forces going left and right. So I'm going to lay out some coordinates or some directions here. I'm gonna say that up is positive and down is negative, like we've been keeping on uh, before. I'm gonna call to the right positive and to the left negative as well. So that makes this normal force positive, force of gravity negative, force from the pull positive, and the force of friction negative, okay? So the difference here when I go to start summing my forces and try to analyze our scenario, I'm gonna have to do the sum of the forces in the x direction separately from the sum of the forces in the y direction because things can be moving in two different directions at one time, and it can have a completely different motion in both of those directions. So if I think about this Y direction for a moment, I know that this block isn't moving up or down. It's staying steady on the surface, moving in a straight horizontal line. 
which means that my force upward is equal to my force downward, just like we have talked about before. So it's not moving in the y direction. So I'm gonna leave this y direction as being equal to zero, okay? But it is moving in the x direction. I have this force pull um, that's pulling it forward. It's gonna make it move to the right. And then I have this force of friction uh, counteracting that. But either way, I am moving in this x direction. So we can already see that the motion in the two directions is different, okay? But we need to add a layer onto this. So up until now, we've been setting the sum of our forces equal to zero because the thing wasn't moving. So that's how we knew that it had the up had to be equal to the down, or if it's not moving in the x direction, the right has to be equal to the left, okay? But that is something, so we're saying that that object is in equilibrium in that direction. So equilibrium can mean that it's not moving, okay? But it can also mean that it's not accelerating. And remember that acceleration is our change in velocity, okay? So if it's not accelerating, that means our velocity is constant. I kind of want to draw that over the x. Let me go back, okay? So our velocity is constant, okay? So if my force to the right was greater than my force to the left, then the object is gonna end up accelerating to the right. That force to the right that's greater would make it speed up in that direction, okay? Um, same with the one to the left. If the one to the left was larger, then it would make this object accelerate in that direction and either speed up or slow down, but change its velocity, okay? So for now, we're not going to be looking at a scenario with that acceleration yet. That's where we're going. That's the next piece after we do our equilibrium forces. That's what we've been kind of chilling in for right now. We're looking at forces in equilibrium, okay? So I know it can feel a little tricky because you're like, all right, well, this force is, this object is moving. So our, um, our forces can't be equal to zero, but for now, they still are, as long as this velocity is constant. As soon as it starts accelerating, then things will not be equal in magnitude, okay? Forces won't be equal in magnitude. Now, for this lab in particular, you had to apply a force, and that force had to get the block into motion, and then it moved at a constant, uh, had a constant force, okay? So we're, we're gonna talk about that piece, that piece of my force was increasing until it got the block into motion. So I'm not talking about that piece yet. I'm talking about the piece of the motion that you use to take your data in which your force versus time graph, which we'll break down a little bit here in a minute, but your force versus time graph was horizontal, okay? So the part before that, the velocity would not be constant, but we are just not worried about that piece yet, okay? So our force is, uh, the sum of our forces in the y direction, again, should be equal to zero because I'm not moving in that direction. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to tell, but I had to hit pause there because someone came in to ask a question. So I don't remember the exact part I was in with my sentence, but either way, we want to now sum our forces in the x direction, sum our forces in the y direction, and we're doing it separately because the motion can be different in both. So for my x direction, we've said that the force pull is positive, and I'm gonna add that to our negative force of friction. So that set that equal to zero. So that's gonna tell us that the force reading from the sensor should be equal in magnitude to our force of friction. Okay. And then in the y direction, I have my normal force upward, uh, and I'm gonna add that to my negative force of gravity, set that equal to zero. So that also tells me that our normal force is equal to the force of gravity. So uh, keep these relationships in mind because we're gonna swing back like we did in the spring force lab and do some replacing using those, those dots there. But before we do that, let's look at the graph that you created. So. This graph should have been looking at the relationship between that pull force in Newtons and our force of gravity in Newtons. So you change that force of gravity, which then changed the amount you had to pull it 
and everyone should have come up with a straight relationship. And for the most part, it should have not had an intercept. Don't panic if you had one. Um, that just means maybe there was a little error in your data taking, um, but you're, you're all good. So, but I'm gonna put it from zero because that's where we should have been. And then I'm gonna completely make up a slope value. So I was kind of perusing earlier and it doesn't look like too many of you have finished this yet. So uh, for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna say your slope was 0.2. Now, again, I'm making that up. So that doesn't at all mean that you should have a slope of okay? Now, these force pull values should have come from the force versus time graph that the force probe make, made when it was attached to the little handheld computer guy. Um, that's called a lab quest, okay? So I'm gonna just kind of roughly look at that for a second. So we had our F pull in Newtons. That force probe is nice and fancy and went ahead and gave us a force probe pull uh, value versus time graph. Now, hopefully you saw that it looked something kind of like this. It was a little scattered, right? But we had this part where we're increasing and then all of a sudden we had a part where we're staying pretty steady here. So this horizontal part, that's what we used to um, take our data. So that's gonna correspond with the force value needed to pull it at a constant speed. So it's a little bit, the, the points here go up and down. It's not quite straight, but we're drawing a line of best fit through it because that person is pulling it by hand and it's pretty much impossible to pull it with the same force by hand, okay? But then, so that's the part we use for our lab. But then we do have this section here where I go from zero and I increase to that value, okay? This increasing part, we're gonna dive deep into um, in a little bit because this increasing part is gonna correspond to um, one of the types of forces, one of the types of force of friction, okay? But for now, I just wanna point out that this red line, this is the part where we were trying to get the block into motion. And then here, this is the point right here where our object starts moving. Ooh, I don't know what just happened. Okay. This is where our motion starts. So start of motion, okay? So this red part is the part that I was referring to earlier where uh, our forces would not have been equal and there would have been an acceleration, but we're not gonna worry about that until next week, okay? We're gonna conceptually talk about it a little, but really right now our, our area that we're focusing on is this green and the green would be where I had a constant force from the pole and that constant force from the pole, that's the one that is gonna be equal to the force of uh, friction. Okay, so after we're looking at that, so you got your force pull data from this green line area. I wanna take this graph and I wanna use it to derive an equation for the force of friction. So Y is equal to slope times X. Our Y value is our force pull. Our slope, we will chit chat about in a second and then our x was our force of gravity okay now our goal is to find an equation for the force of friction but i i don't have the force of friction in this equation yet so i need to do a little replacing in order to get this equation where i want it to be so i'm going to think back to these two relationships we had up here we said that the force from the pole was equal to the force of friction and that the normal force was equal to the force of gravity. So if I come back to this equation, I'm going to replace force pull with force of friction. And I'm going to re replace force of gravity with the normal force because those are the two variables that I want in our equation here for the force of friction. So then I'm left here with the slope. And to figure out, start thinking about what our slope tells us, I'm gonna do the same thing as before, and I'm going to look at the units for our slope. However, I'm about to run out of time, so I'm gonna stop this one and pick up on a part two and analyze those units.